Ghana is in debt. Well, you and I are in debt. We'll have to pay to a power producing company, Trafigura GPGC, to the tune of over $111 million. Think about it. Over $111 million. And I'm going to tell you why, exactly why we're having to cough out this amount of money and what has resulted in it. Exactly why we should all be concerned about the state of affairs. Things cannot certainly continue to be the same and for us to expect different results. So, well, in, in the end, this amount of money that we're talking about, you and I will have to pay. It is not the attorney general's or the president or anybody. It is a cost that has been slapped on Ghana by essentially Ghanaians. And this is what happened. Well, if you recall, at some point in our history, between 2015, 2014, 2016, we had issues with the, the power outages. At the time, there were some power purchase agreements that were signed. Well, according to John Peter Meu, sometime on the 20th of September, 2018, he addressed a press conference indicating that as of the end of 2016, 14 power purchase agreements had been signed by the Electricity Company of Ghana with about 1,104 megawatts of electricity as, as estimated. And then also 18 PPAs were also signed by the ECG with an estimated 6,000 megawatts expected. All combined, we're talking about 32. Now, after that, sometime in 2022, there was that decision to have a committee put together to review some of these power purchase agreements that were set up or uh, that was signed at the time. After that committee that was made up of the Energy Commission, the Ministry itself, and other stakeholders, there was a decision taken to abrogate a number of them, in fact, and also review a number of them as well. Out of that, we understand 26 of them were either reviewed, renegotiated, or cancelled. This particular power purchase agreement is one of the many that were cancelled. According to Peter Meu, based on a decision that the Attorney General's office had actually recommended that they should take, or it was prudent for government to take, to cancel those PPAs. Guess what? This Trafigura GPGC was one of these independent power purchase or the power producers contracted by the NDC government in the height of this energy crisis that we found ourselves in. The contract terminated in 2018 when the MPP government took over after this audit of the power purchase agreement that resulted in the dispute. Take a look at this. Now, when that decision was taken to abrogate that particular Trafigura power purchase agreement, the company decided to go to court, submitted to arbitration in the United Kingdom. In January 2021, the UK Arbitrary Tribunal issued a final award after finding out that Ghana actually breached its contractual obligations to Trafigura GPGC. That decision to abrogate, according to the court in the UK, was a breach of the contractual obligations. It was a judgment that was slapped on us to the tune of over $134 million. And that includes some issues of the cost that Trafigura itself incurred. Ghana only made a partial payment amounting to a little over $1.8 million, leaving a balance of over a 111.4 million, almost 111.5 million dollars in arrears. And guess what? It was accruing interest as well. Trafigura then filed another action to enforce the remainder of the award in the United States, to which Ghana entered no defense. And this is something you should think about as well. The government of Ghana entered no defense in this particular instance, when Trafigura then filed this other action to enforce the remainder of the award. Because in the mind of the Attorney General, it's really, there was no point contesting this. We, we just had to pay. The courts then gave a default judgment in favor of Trafigura GPGC, ordering us to pay over $111.4 million 
dollars and mandatory post-judgment interest that also was calculated to the tune of over $30 million. So if you do the addition, it's not just about $111 million. We're going to have to pay more. So that is what the picture looks like right now. The Attorney General, in response to this, is saying, quoted here, that the award was final and his duty was to ensure that the Ministry of Finance pays. And indeed, the Ministry of Finance has not paid. He's not the Minister of, Minister of Finance. So really, the burden of this new development is not on him because he doesn't pay. And that's his response to critics who say that, well, he should also be answering questions and taking the blame for this, the non-payment of this arbitrary award, which has not resulted in further costs to us as a country. Well, this is judgment debt. We've had conversations about judgment debt and how sometimes things are allowed to just go through without any action because some people inadvertently benefit from these judgment debts. Well,